Today, we're making easy, restaurant-quality vegan meals. Let's make magic. These three restaurant-quality dinners can be made in less than one hour for all three meals. Each meal costs less than one dollar and less than one pound and uses everyday ingredients. Not only are these meals vegan, but they are also gluten-free, high-protein and filling. The best thing about these recipes is that they taste very expensive, but they're actually very cheap and they use everyday ingredients. And the total price for all of these three recipes is just £9.52 or $11.42 for 12 meals. And the average price per meal works out at just 79 pence or 95 cents, which is absolutely incredible if you think about how much you pay for a restaurant meal. And these meals are actually way more delicious than many of the restaurant meals I've had lately. So a lot of the time I would rather stay in and cook my own meal, especially if I can make 12 meals in less than one hour. Here are all of the ingredients that I used for all of these three meals. And with a wave of the wand, we turned this into this in just one hour. Usually I cook for my husband and I because my kids aren't a fan of vegetables, so I make them something different. But my husband is away for the next three weeks and I know that means that I am going to be extra busy with my household chores, so I made myself three weeks worth of weekday meals knowing that all my own dinners are already made and I don't have to worry about those. The first recipe I'm showing you is my vegan meatloaf. And although this recipe does take a long time in the oven, all of this is passive time where you can be preparing your side dishes, catching up on work, doing whatever you need to do. This recipe is so easy. It comes together so quickly because you literally just blitz everything in a food processor, pour it into a pan, glaze the top and then shove it in the oven. It looks really expensive. It's a big crowd pleaser, but it's so delicious, so healthy, so cheap and so quick to prepare. The total calories for this entire meal, including all of the side dishes, is 390 calories and it contains 15 grams of protein per serving. One of the reasons this recipe comes together so quickly is you don't really need to do any proper chopping. You just need to get your vegetables into your food processor. So I did actually quarter them, which took seconds. So I threw in my onion, and mushroom and put those in the food processor and blitz them. Next, I'm putting in some rolled oats, some ground flaxseed, and to save money, you can grind your own flaxseed, a can of black beans, and to make this even cheaper, you could use cheaper beans. The exact weights and measurements are on the blog. I'm adding in my homemade stock powder, and I've got a recipe for the full batch and also a single serving of this vegetable stock powder. And the same with this homemade Italian seasoning. I'm adding in some sea salt, my already chopped frozen garlic, some tamari, which is gluten-free soy sauce. And that's all you need for the base. Just give this a blitz in your food processor. Take the blade out, give it a little stir. Line a loaf pan with greaseproof or parchment paper and then add your mixture to the pan and press it down as firmly as you can. Now this recipe serves four because I like all of my recipes to serve four, but if you want to double this recipe, then you will be able to fit eight portions in the same loaf pan. Now we're going to whip up a quick glaze for the top of the meatloaf. So in a bowl, you're going to add in some red wine vinegar, and here's a quick tip. I like to add in the liquids first to my measuring spoon and then use the same spoon for pastes and they'll come out a lot easier. Then we're going to add in your liquid sweetener of choice. I like to use Sweet Freedom because it's made from fruit and lower in calories than maple syrup. Then I'm adding in some tomato paste or puree. Give this a good stir and then spread it out over the top of your meatloaf. Add it to a preheated oven. Please excuse my dirty oven. I actually didn't notice this until I looked at the video and now I'm going to go and clean it. While the meatloaf is cooking in the oven, we're also going to make another oven dish. We're going to make a vegan oven risotto. I absolutely adore risotto. It's one of the things that I usually order in a restaurant if it's available. 
and when I made this dish for the first time, me and my husband both agreed that this was the best meal I had ever made. It is so delicious. Usually you have to stand over a stove and stir your risotto constantly for around about 20 minutes, but this is so easy because you just throw it in the oven and it still comes out amazing. And although this is restaurant quality food, we are not paying restaurant prices because this works out at just 62 pence or 75 cents per meal, which is absolutely incredible. Each serving contains 381 calories and 12 grams of protein. So the first thing we're doing is we are going to add some oil to the pan. The oil I like to use is sunflower oil because it's more of a neutral taste than olive oil and it's a lot cheaper, usually half the price. And using sunflower oil means I can use it for sweet things and savory things. So I only need to have one oil at any time, not multiple different flavors of oil. So then we are going to dice an onion and add that to the pan. And then we're going to dice up a lot of mushrooms and add these to the pan. The mushrooms are going to be the main meaty substance and protein content of this dish. It looks like a lot, but they will cook down really small. Now I'm adding in some pre-chopped garlic, give it a stir, and it's time for the seasoning. I'm using some of my Italian seasoning, some of my homemade stock powder, and some sea salt, and then give it another stir. Now we're going to add in the risotto rice. It's called arborio rice. And this is short grain rice, so you don't pre-rinse it before you add it to your dishes. Because when it cooks, it becomes very sticky. And that's the best part of risotto is the type of rice that you use. Now I'm adding in a can of peas, which is another good protein source of this recipe. Next, I'm adding in my secret ingredient, which is actually white wine. And this is what makes it taste restaurant quality. I know a lot of people don't like consuming alcohol, so you can replace this with water if you like. However, I personally don't drink alcohol. It doesn't really agree with me when I drink it either. But I've noticed that I'm fine in a recipe because you boil away the alcohol as the recipe cooks. And a lot of people don't like to use alcohol because they think it's too expensive. They think I'll have to buy a whole bottle of wine and then probably have to drink the bottle of wine and that will increase the cost of the meal. But this is what I did, especially because I don't drink alcohol. I bought a bottle of the biggest, cheapest wine that I could possibly find, which was just under three pounds, round about three dollars. And I divided it into half cup portions which I then put in my freezer. So every time I make this recipe or I make some other recipe that I want to use wine for, I can just get out one of those bags and I don't need to buy a bottle of wine every time. And it makes this recipe taste delicious. I see cooking with wine very similar to cooking with vinegar. Let me know in the comments if you ever add alcohol to your food. Now we're going to add some lemon juice. And here's another cost saving tip. Instead of buying whole lemons or whole limes, just buy a bottle of lemon juice or a bottle of lime juice. Granted, it's not as healthy, but I get all the nutrients I need from my morning smoothie. So I don't really feel like I have to have fresh lemon juice as well. And the price of this lemon juice is literally a third of a pence. It is that cheap. Whereas if I'd used a whole lemon, it would have been 30 pence. So there's a massive cost saving there as well. Now you're going to add in some boiling water. It's very important that the water is boiling, otherwise it's going to take longer to cook in the oven, much longer than expected. Now you're going to add the whole mixture into an oven safe tray or dish, and then you need to cover it. You can either cover it with a lid or you can cover it with tin foil or kitchen foil. So I'm throwing that in the oven next to the meatloaf. Now it's time for my morning green thicky that I have every morning and I usually have it at the same time as getting on with something else. These green thickies are absolutely delicious, contain a massive amount of nutrients and are perfect for weight loss without hunger. And if you'd like to get started on a green thickies diet, I have a green thickies seven day detox that will help you kickstart your weight loss on a plant-based diet. And there is a link to that in the description below. Now we're on to the third recipe, which is vegan chili. And this is a recipe I see on restaurant menus for vegans all the time. I've had so many chilies in restaurants, I can't even count the number. And this recipe is by far the most delicious. Again, it's a very cheap recipe to make, costing 99 pence per meal or $1.18 per meal. It serves four people 
and each serving contains 414 calories and 30 grams of protein. It is massively high in protein and it will really fill you up until your next meal, helping you to lose weight. And the best thing about this recipe, it is so quick to make. You throw everything in the pan and you don't even need to leave it to simmer for any length of time. Once it's done and you've got all the ingredients in the pan, it is done. So let's whip up a portion of that now. I'm adding some sunflower oil to the pan. I'm chopping up an onion and here is a tip for slicing onions. If you cut your onion in half and then slice it lengthways, then hold on to the end and slice it horizontally. This will make it much easier to chop an onion. Make magic with food. Make magic with food. Make magic. Make magic. Make magic with food. Just do it. Just brew it. Just live it. The truth is. The love is just waiting for you now, just brew it. If you love the fruit you live in and you want to share the magic, like you share the message and you'll help the fruity mission. Keep the fruity love alive and you'll keep making magic. Help me spread the fruit, love with the magical life of fruit. Now we're dicing up a pepper. Cut it in half, remove the membranes, dice it up and add that to the pan. Give it a little stir, add in some frozen garlic. Now it's time for the spices. Now we're using my homemade chili seasoning. And here's a tip about seasoning. If you add your seasoning before you add your liquids, this will toast your seasoning, releasing the flavors and making it much more delicious. Give it a little stir. Now we're adding in some red kidney beans for protein. These come from a can, so they are already pre-cooked. You can't add raw, dried beans to this dish without following the packet ingredients to cook them to the letter. It's not safe to add raw beans to your meals so make sure you're using canned beans. Now we're adding in some chopped tomatoes, give it a stir, and now we're adding the main protein source of this recipe, TVP, which stands for textured vegetable protein. This is soybeans that have been dried and the fat has been removed, which makes it perfect for weight loss. Similar to tofu, only it's lower in fat. There are so many reasons why I absolutely love TVP. It's extremely high in protein. It's very, very cheap. It's long life. It keeps for absolutely ages in your cupboards. It cooks extremely quickly in a matter of minutes. And it tastes absolutely delicious. It's got a very nice meaty texture. But despite all of these benefits, a lot of people don't like to use soy. Soy has had a very bad reputation just because of one flawed study that was since debunked. But it has been proven over and over again that soy is actually very, very good for you. So that's why I use a lot of it in my cooking. But if you don't want to use it, you can use a vegan mince of your choice or some extra beans. I always have substitutions and ingredient explanations on my blog post. Now we're going to add in some tamari, some red wine vinegar, and some tomato paste or puree. And if you have a sweet tooth like me, then you'll want to add a little bit of liquid sweetener. Give it a good stir, and at this point, you won't believe it, but this recipe is actually finished. We don't need to leave it to cook, because the TVP mince is very small, and it's already absorbed all of the liquid, so it's fine to eat. If you like a drier chilli, then stop here, but if you like your chilli a little bit more saucy, then you can add some boiling water to it right now. So I have added a little bit of boiling water to make it a little bit more saucy. And if you want to add in some herbs, either some basil or some coriander or cilantro, then you can add them in now and give it a stir. And I was so busy making this dish that I forgot to check on my other two dishes. Oh no, I've burned it. My vegan meatloaf is looking a little char grilled, but don't worry, I'm going to fix it and I'll show you how to fix it if you also have the same problem. I also had a look at the risotto, had a taste of the rice and the rice was cooked, but this also had a little problem. There was too much liquid left in the pan. And I think this is because I put it in the same oven as something else, but this was easily fixed as well because all I did was take the lid off and put it in for another three minutes and then all of the liquid had been absorbed and it was absolutely perfect. You need to leave your vegan meatloaf to cool down a little bit by putting it onto a cooling rack. 
Now that my risotto is perfect, it's time to add the finishing touches to it. I'm adding in some vegan cheese. You can use any type of vegan cheese. I thought I would try some vegan parmesan for a change and it worked out beautifully, but any vegan cheese will work. I'm also adding in a little bit of vegan butter. And because it's still hot, you can stir it up and the cheese and butter are going to melt very, very nicely. And then finally, add your fresh basil and give it a stir. Now we're whipping up a couple of very quick side dishes, which can also be done while your meatloaf is in the oven. I'm going to cook some broccoli and there's no need to chop this on a chopping board, making loads of mess everywhere. So I am just chopping it straight into the pan. Add a good teaspoon of salt, add your boiling water and simmer this for a few minutes. Now we're going to whip up some mash. Here's where my meal prep has come in handy. I made eight different types of carb side dishes in one go and added them to my freezer. So now every time I want some carbs, I just get out one of these pre-made portions. So I've already cooked my potatoes, but if you want to make your mash from scratch, all you do is you boil your potatoes. You can either peel them first or not peel them, depending on whether you want to mash up the peel as well. I don't mind eating mash from unpeeled potatoes. So you just add your potatoes to a pan, cover with boiling water, add in some salt, boil them until you can get a knife or fork all the way through the potato, drain them, put them in a pan and just mash them with a potato masher. Add in some salt and then add in some plant milk of your choice. I'm using soya milk again because it's high in protein. Give it a stir and then warm it up on the stove for a couple of minutes until all of the liquid has been absorbed. And then you've got perfect easy mash. And just for the record, you can eat potatoes and mashed potatoes and still lose weight. The broccoli is now done because I can stick a fork through it and it feels nice and soft. So I'm just draining that. And now I want some gravy to go on my mashed potatoes. So you can either use store-bought vegan gluten-free gravy or you can make your own. And I'm going to show you my homemade recipe. It's way more delicious and healthy than store-bought gravy. The way I make gravy might not be traditional, but it comes together very, very quickly. So what you do is start by adding your dry ingredients to a pan, add in your gluten-free flour, some stock powder, sausage seasoning, and a little bit of butter. Add the pan to a low heat. Add in a small amount of boiling water at the same time as whisking it. Then finally adding in some tamari for seasoning and color. And now we're ready to serve up. I am serving my chili with some pre-cooked rice. I made a big batch of rice and portioned it out in my freezer. So I just warmed up one of those portions. Pop in the chili. Oops, pop the chili all over the rice. Sort that out. Now we're going to add our aesthetic additions. So pop on a little bit of plant-based yogurt. I like to use soy yogurt and some basil leaves. Now we're going to slice up the vegan meatloaf. I've made four portions of this. So I'm cutting it into four and then I'm cutting those portions in half. So each portion has two slices. And now it's time to get rid of that burned look on the top. So all I did was add in a little bit of tomato paste or puree and spread it across the top to give it a reddish tinge. Serve up your mash, add in your broccoli and give yourself a portion of homemade gravy. Now we're serving up the risotto, which is so easy. Just throw it all in a bowl and garnish with basil. All of these recipes featured here today contain around about 400 calories and will help you lose weight on a plant-based diet. I use my healthy weight plant-based plate system to structure every recipe that I create. And if you want to know more about how to lose weight on a plant-based diet, I have a link to a blog post below that shows you exactly how to do it. And I also have a free smoothies for weight loss bundle that you can get in the description below as well. The recipes that I showed you today are great for weekday meals, especially if you meal prep ahead of time. You can store them all in your freezer and then just warm them up later. But if you're looking for some vegan recipes that you can whip up very quickly over the weekend, then I have three quick vegan dinners for weight loss and this should appear on the screen now. So go and check that out. Now it's your turn to go and make magic with food. The Magical Life of